But we're back, and we've got this mission on tap. First two missions have gone very well. Uh, we had a flawless Gatecrasher mission. We managed to take down all the enemies without taking any damage ourselves. And we've got, uh, we managed to win the Jailbreak mission without anybody taking damage as well. So nobody, nobody injured yet. That will not last the entire campaign, I'm sure. Now we've got this mission where we actually had a, a generous 11 day timer where we were able to put eight people on it. So we've got a technical and a reaper. Everybody else is a rookie. So we're trading off quality here for quantity. Uh, and the plan, the, the goal here is to get all these rookies promotions. This would be six new squaddies that we'd have after this mission, which would be great. But we got work to do first. We gotta get gotta get this engineer to an evac zone. Now these missions tend to be a little bit trickier than your standard missions because you do not start in concealment. It is a revealed start mission and you have a fixed evac location. Uh, it's the, Actually the prison break mission was like that too where there was a fixed evac, but a lot of missions you have the ability you know, to evac with, with a flare wherever you want. You just have to wait a few turns for Sky Ranger to show up. When you have a fixed evac location, it's harder to get out of the mission if the game goes. Excuse me, it's hard to get out of the mission if it goes bad. We've got the coordinates, but it's likely we'll have to clear out a contingent of hostile forces to make this work. So you know, so if you have a fixed evac and you get into a firefight, and the evac is behind the enemies, which is how it's going to probably be in this in this situation, there's not that much you can do to get away from them. Uh, in XCOM, in XCOM 2, it's it's very hard to run away from enemies, especially early in the game. You know, we don't have any. Nobody's got like a spider suit or something that lets them grapple around the buildings. Um, some of these characters have worse mobility than some of the enemies, so we're pretty much committed. Once we get into engagements with the enemies, you know, pretty much just committed to winning those fights. Here we have eight soldiers, and that should offset. Unless somehow all eight or nine of the enemies in the level were in the same place. Yeah, well, position for most isn't concealed, but Joanna, different. As you order, Commander. They have a patrol moving here. Wow, right, right out of the gate, immediately we have contact. I mean, that's. That's interesting. Uh, I mean, if I move even to here, we're going to see them. I don't want to handle that. Because I'd, I'd like to... I think what we're going to do... Over here. Is we're going to pull our people. We're going to try to set them up so that when they see us, they take cover You know, in these kinds of spots where we can have flank shots from people on the high ground. Because that would be an easy way to eliminate these guys. Okay. So let's put a little bit further up. Let's put half our team up here. All right, I'm coming. And then you three. First order of business, let's get this uh, engineer just get you kind of out of the picture here. Now, what do we do here? I'm sort of assuming that they'll come down this way. It is possible that they just kind of go away. Let's beat these chumps down. Ah. Okay, that's my technical. I want. What do I do with you? If I'm moving anywhere up here. It's basically a reveal. Um, probably want you in a position where you could shoot a rocket if you had to. So I think right here. Yeah. It's fine. Finally. Come get some. Let's. Hmm. Let's go ahead and poke up a little further. And let's see what they do. Are they coming towards us or going away? Kind of neither. 
Alright, so let's see. Oh interesting. I'm gonna have to I have to double move to trigger them here. What about you? Can you trigger them somehow? Hmm. We definitely want to trigger them while we have people in position up here. And while they're isolated. That won't last forever. So let's have you come up here and draw their attention. And then... Where can you pull back to, though? There's nowhere really to pull back to. I guess here? Or inside? That might work. No, because if I pull back here, they'll probably they'll probably take cover behind these trees. I want them to take cover at a different angle. Let's see. The other option is to use Ari for this. Maybe she has a better Nope. There's no better place she can go to. Alright. Well, the skull you're just gonna be in half cover. That's how it's gonna be. Okay. All right, that worked out pretty well. Right. Let's take the UV shot first. If we don't get them here, we'll probably just volume of fire them from the roof at that height advantage. And if we still don't kill them, we'll uh, we'll have our technical use grenade probably. That'll do. Nice one. We'll make a graze on that, but good enough. Okay. Not a lot of so railing doesn't offer a lot of actual cover spots. Going. All right, let's see. Is there a window? Oh, there's a window right there. Let's drop to this tile because there are sometimes civilians right behind these windows that can't see. My life is in your hands. Too many missions have been ruined by forgetting about that information. There's an alien patrol nearby. Wow! Right away, another group. That's interesting. Okay. Hmm. Let's not be seen with these fellas. Where are they going to go if they come up? Yeah, they won't be able to move that far. Uh, okay. They actually moved away from us. These guys aren't even... They don't know what's going on. They're not even on alert or anything. I've spotted an alien patrol. Okay. So we need to get eyes on that sectoid group again. Moving out. Okay. Great. So that they will see us there. Kind problem. I don't know. I mean, Come on. if they were to walk into an Overwatch ambush from where with us in this position. It would be very bad for them. So, and we got... So we're going to put all four of these people in Overwatch, and we're just going to kind of run up with our other soldiers, because we can start taking them into the building. Let's see. This is just a solid wall. So... Yeah, they're not going to be able to see. Although, I don't know, this game is notorious for, like... So if I put Ryuji here, you can imagine them somehow finding like a spot, like maybe right here or something, where they could see him through this window and make this perfect pinpoint shot. 
I've been gunned down too many times in the past by those kinds of, uh, by those kinds of shots. Now I could. Now what's interesting here is that somehow doesn't trigger. Why doesn't that trigger? Oh, I see why. Because of this. Because this pillar and this car is blocking line of sight. Pretty much means if I put her here, Stepping off. Um, the enemies are bound to see her at some point. Now, I can do this. And this is a pretty safe move because there's no... Yeah, they can't see there through the car. This is also good because this puts uh, my technical in position to use a rocket shot if we want. I doubt we'd need it, but you. you never know. All right. All right. All right. Just, just chill, VIP. You're, you're fine. We're, we got 18 turns on this. Here they come. Nice hit. We still got three other Overwatch shots. It'd be great if we could uh, take down that sectoid. Oh, Jill, come on. That'll do. Uh, <laughs> these guys are still just hanging out. Oh, that's funny. Wait, Joanna has a bond with Interesting with the technical. Okay. That gives me an idea. So, Joanna, how far... Can you... Yeah, this engineer is creating problems. What I'd like to do is give her the extra bond move, have her move up here, throw the claymore on these guys, and then she can just shoot it and detonate it and wipe them out. Neither of those guys has loot. There's no there's no resources or anything we're losing from that. So he moves her on up to watch up here. Um, hmm. I want to bait him out somehow. How do we do that? I'm always hesitant to put a soldier next to, <laughs> in, in cover in like a gas station area, but... Hmm. There's also the nuclear option. But... That's... Yeah, he has a loot though. I mean, he's only an engineer. I'm not... Oh! Wait, there's a place I can actually move to make this play that I want to make that I'm somehow not visible. Hmm. That's a little risky if the engineer's still alive, because he can see me, and he would definitely take that shot. Good old 27, not gonna take that. Yeah, I think the right play here is just to reload all of our reload. Overwatch contingent and just uh, see if he runs up into our line of fire. Ready. Okay. I mean, I don't know if he's that dumb, but he might be. I'm gonna move Art here. He can't see her there. So he's gonna probably need to move up in some capacity. On Overwatch. And he can't see the technical either, can he? Interesting. Makes me wonder. What about here? Yeah. Uh, let's just hunker with you so that his shot, if he decides to take one, isn't a great one. Let's apparently Joanna can. Are you really not seen by anybody there? Is it because it must be because those guys aren't on alert? The game is telling me they won't even see me there, but that just seems wrong. So let's go up here like this. Covering ground. Sucks because now 
don't think we're going to be able to get that loot. And that might be an Illyrium Core. Uh, I want to know where they went. Go here. Positive. See what we're seeing here. Putting Ari in one of these half cover spots would be very risky. But that's an Illyrium core probably in there. And that's 40 supplies that I want. We can no longer hide. Okay, that was not part of the plan, but. How are we looking? How are we looking over here? Can't do it. Okay. Let's see. We have a flank here. I can also play more both of these guys if I want. But I really, I, I don't know what that guy has. Loot drops are just so rare early in the game. I am going to go for this. Ari's got 5 HP. She can shrug off a hit if needed. And it wasn't a Lyrium Core, so that's 40 supplies, basically, that we wouldn't have had otherwise. Stay here and get ready for probably a rocket shot. The most dangerous enemy here is probably this trooper. Now, I normally I would just throw it here. But I've had so many experiences in this game with throwing the Claymore and then not being able to see it to shoot it. I don't want that to happen here. So I think this civilian is just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Oh, lo and behold, I still can't see it. Was this a function of the team attack? Is this because, uh... That's interesting. Alright, then I guess we're pulling it back a little bit. So the team attack doesn't give me... Doesn't let me... It's, it's just a movement action. Even, even if I don't... So how, how did the game count that, then? So I did the team attack, I moved... I moved... Did the team attack through the claymore and still had a movement action. So I guess that third action, if you use the team attack, whatever. If you haven't used two movement actions before, it has to be has to be another movement. That's just weird. It was, by the way, not like that in vanilla. Uh, in vanilla, you, that team attack you could use it to uh, to simply do a regular attack again if you wanted. I mean, all the full cover spots are basically taken at this point. They're anywhere near the combat zone. Yeah. VIP, I'm actually going to move you here. Alright, so we're going to take some return fire, but hopefully nothing too bad. That's what I figured he would do. That doesn't do any damage, though. What's that guy doing? Okay, that's the predictable shot. One person in half cover. What is he doing? That that move makes no sense. Unless he just really wanted. Let's see. So if anybody comes back to that cover spot, we've got him. 
Now this is something I didn't know. You could, apparently you can't use... Huh, I didn't know that. Apparently you can't use grenades when you're disorienting. Now, I don't like putting you in half cover, but 80% flank shot needs to be taken. Alright, what do we do with you all? Well, Ari, we're getting you out of that nasty half cover spot. And we took out the guy, the one guy who has a loot drop. So. Joanna, you're too important. I'm probably. Wait a minute. Did he. He flanked himself to. I, I knew that was a crazy move. Why? I mean, it's not a high percentage shot, but. I'm gonna take it. It's just a question of whether I take it with her or with uh, this guy. Oh, this guy can't reach. He, this guy can get this shot, though, which is also a flank. This is baffling. Why would he... I mean, was he that desperate to escape the Claymore? Ah, he doesn't get punished for it, though. That's unfortunate. I'm gonna move him out of half cover, though, and try to punish him for it. A 48 on a flank. Oh, he hit. Something. but they can't see me there, and that's good. So hopefully... I mean, surely he's going to move out of that flanked position, right? He's not just going to hang out there. Over here. Roger. Now, Jill, could that trooper move in such a way to flank you from there? Where would he have to... I'm thinking, no. But let me see. Da -da. How would he have to move? He's back here. One, two, three, four, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, he'd have to get at a minimum. Yeah, I'm further back than I thought, so we're good. He doesn't have the movement for that. Uh-oh. Now, that is bad if they get a yellow alert action here. Looks like they didn't, though. That guy is double moving. None of them can be punished for these mistakes. Including that guy. Okay, well, he's dead now. That's the way it should be. You just flank yourself and survive the turn. What a joke. Where's the technical? Oh, uh, why can't the technical be up there to use the flamethrower? Anybody can shoot that Claymore, so I'm not going to worry about that. Now here, this is a four-tile spread, and I have not yet figured out what that means. That's sketchy. Better move is just grenade. From me to you. One down. Uh, let's see. Anybody can shoot. I'm, I'm just going to grenade these guys to death. There's no, there's no need for uh, for subtlety or fancy maneuvering here. Just grenade them to death. I think that's two kills for that guy right there. Yep. Okay. And who else has? So can you move in there and just shoot the guy point blank? No. You cannot. But you can probably throw a grenade in there, right? Keep this, you know, this train going. Here I come. Get ready for a surprise. Now she is out of cover, which you would normally never do, but. Okay, she's got the shot on the Claymore, so I'm going to have Joanna pop in there and finish the job here. Normally you would never leave a soldier out of cover, but in this situation we know that there are only uh, seven to nine enemies on the level. We've already got six down, 
this was this should be the last group uh, unless there's like a solo drone somewhere I think most of the time on these missions there's only eight even though it says seven to nine in any event I'm uh, I'm not overly concerned about like a solo drone pod or whatever might have to be left so I guess that's civ that civilian never moved. He's had three turns to get out of there and he never moved. Well, sorry, Adam Martin, but you got to get out of the way when XCOM's handling business. Come on. Uh, the music to Bleach is all quiet now after all those explosions. So, we are very close to evac. We're probably out of here before reinforcements even get here. I can cover it. Definitely we're lucky we didn't have... Um, Leave it to not me. only do we not have any wounds, nobody even lost their ablative plating. The, the biggest danger there uh, was that was these guys that came in over here on yellow, like if they had been on yellow alert and taken actions. That sentry, for example, suppose he shoots at somebody here in this in this area, uh, and then goes on. Although actually, now that I think about it, we had we had several people who could just toss a grenade in there to disable that Overwatch. So it wasn't as bad of a situation as it could have been. But man, this is going to be glorious, though. This is going to be six rookies getting into squatty level and the jump from rookie to squatty is so massive in terms of utility On the move. rookies are just so limited they can basically only throw grenades and shoot things they have no abilities Hurry. all right it's just that's a long run yeah yeah whatever oh oh Come on, over here. All right. Oh, what the hell? Hey. What just happened? I don't know why he went. I'm not sure. That was clearly a misclick, but I don't know. Let's go. I don't know why he went to that spot or exactly what happened. It's the biggest enemy of Iron Man, at least for me, someone who's traditionally a console gamer. The biggest enemy is the misclick. I never had that problem when I was playing with a controller on the uh, PS4, but here. Get going. So we could stick around and try to kill some reinforcements, but the reinforcements are worth such a small amount of experience, it's really not worth your time. Uh, that's also kind of a cheese strategy that I'm just in general not a fan of, so. We're just going to get everybody out of here. I will stick around and take out reinforcements if I have, you know, a, a soldier or a VIP that I'm still running to the evac zone. But in that situation, we're just getting out. It's another flawless mission. That, that's not great. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Except for this guy over here on, who is that? Is that, is that that rando? Yeah, Klaus. Figures it would be Klaus doing something strange. Sure, buddy. Whatever. Let's get a different location. It's kind of bland. Can we get that building where we blew everything up? I don't even recognize most of this from the level. Uh, oh, there you go. Yeah, that's a great photo. Just get that. There you go. There's your poster. That'll do. I hope you're ready to be famous. Our enemy 
even on that mission, you can kind of see how they've changed some things up with the pod behavior in Long War. So in, in a lot of, uh, in the previous game, they always had, like, the, most of the early levels would have three pods. They would all behave, they would all move around in a sort of set area. It was very rare on those kinds of missions to have the pods close enough together that they could kind of multi-activate unless you make a mistake of some sort, where you, like, try to run someone way around the back of the, of the group you're engaging, or way off to the side. But here, because of the way that the noise works in the game and draws enemies toward you, it's far more common to have to, en to have to engage multiple pods at the same time. So even though on paper, there's only four pods to two in that level, you quickly wind up if you're not careful with a lot of enemies that you've got to engage. I'm going to handle these promotions in the barracks with a lot to go around. 40 supplies here. Nice this suppressor. So, yeah, having the, the black market. So we could accelerate the tactics school, save like a day and a half by doubling that speed. I don't think that is going to be worth our worth our time as much as getting this. All right, what do we got? Let's see. Let's do our promote promotions with you all first. I don't know if I've said anything about the overall tech trees in this game. At this point, we're still pretty early on. Shadow Strike, Dead Shots, Steady Hands is kind of weird on technical. Hmm. Okay. So, every single soldier in this game has basically three skill trees. You've got Top one, top row, middle row, and a, and a bottom row. And then you have the XCOM row, which is just a sort of random uh, collection of different skills. And these first four are always worth 10 AP to get. These next two are 20, and then the last one's always 40. So if you want the last one, not only do you have to get to Master Sergeant promotion, but you also got to save up 40 um, ability points to use. So, in the technical tree, you've got a bunch of pyro-based skills, you've got a bunch of rocket-based skills, and then you've got the middle-tier skills, which are just kind of general uh, rifle utility, defense, etc. So, like, formidable, you get two more ablative armor points and take 50% less damage from explosions. Fortify, you can just give yourself a 20%, or a 20, um, plus 20 defense, not 20%, just plus 20. That would be a really good skill for a soldier that has an inherent minus six defense and minus four dodge. So it's formidable because you're likely to uh, you're likely to get shot. So I almost always take fire in the hole with my first skill because rockets are so inaccurate without it that they're not reliable. And if you're in a position where you want to use a rocket, you probably need it. You're gonna want it to hit. Now, the Reaper skill tree has also been changed a bit. So, Sprinter. Don't see that that often. Untouchable would also be nice. That's a 40. That's a big investment. So, some of the Reaper skills that they had in the original game are back. Skills like Banish and Annihilate. Some are new. Disabling Shot is a new... Uh, that was in the original XCOM and within. It was not in XCOM 2, as far as I can recall. Uh, same with Covert. Silent Killer was in the original game. This uh, this one, I either take... I either take Lone Wolf or I take Distraction. Lone Wolf is really good. Um, plus 10 defense and plus 10 aim when you're when you're because the reaper is almost always going to be in a position where the supplies is almost always going to be on their own you're not going to use the reaper as a fighter like with your normal squad but distraction is really powerful in the later game because eventually the enemies scale up to where the claymore is not going to instantly kill them and so but it's still a really powerful opener to an engagement because it shreds armor and does large area of, area of effect damage i will definitely be taking shrapnel uh, that increases the Claymore's damage from 5 to 8 and increases its radius 
by one tile in every direction. So instead of doing that little three by three square, it's a five by five, which is, uh, you can get, you know, you, you find us one of the nasty pods with like seven or eight enemies in it later on in the game. This can really make an impact on, um, especially if you're able to get them like to open the engagement, start from, you know, from concealment, uh, open up with that. And disorienting enemies when it explodes uh, makes it even more powerful. So I like distraction. That's what we're going to do. Now, the first promotion we do is going to be a ranger. And I had already kind of pegged Jill Valentine for ranger because she's got good HP. Doesn't have great movement, but rangers tend to just stay in place and shoot. Uh, and of course, she's got 74 AM. So that's what we're going with. So we got down here, precision shot, lone lone wolf, we got a really good on ranger. If at least, oh, you have iron curtain. That's interesting. I've never seen iron curtain. I didn't know it could even show up down here. That's a that's a gunner skill. Huh. I'll have to think about how I want to pull her as we move along. All right, let's just start. These are all going to be random, but let's just start. Filling them in. Ori is a grenadier. She can get deep cover right away. And she can get aim? So we could take deep cover, which means if you didn't attack, you'd hunker down automatically, and then <laughs> that would that hunkering down would confer plus 20 aim on the next turn. That's really good. She also has fortify down here, which increases as that defense increase. These are some good skills down here. I don't usually make the grenadier... Like, I don't usually have the Grenadier shoot that much, but she might be, with these two skills, she might be someone who could pull it off in certain situations. You know, double move her up to a to an advantageous position. I think she had damn good ground in there, didn't she? As well? Yeah, 10 aim and defense, uh, or it's a lower elevation. So imagine running her up to a higher elevation with a double move, or even just a single move, whatever. Uh, deep cover will activate if you go on Overwatch. So if you move, if you move once, and then you go on uh, on Overwatch, you'll also go in hunker down mode. This is this is a pretty that's a pretty powerful combination of skills in there. So don't die, Ari. Another ranger. She doesn't have the kind of aim though that Jill does. She does have steady hands, though, and that would offset that pretty easily. Okay. All right, Silly, you got 70 aim. What are we rolling with here? You're going to be in assault with 70 aim and only 14 mobility. That's not great. Minus nine defense is not good on an assault, Silly. That is, that is bad. We're going to need you to take fortify. Although, with that much aim, 72 aim is very high for an assault, especially at squatty level. I'm tempted to take the perks that give him, that improve his, uh, his arc thrower. Because it'll have a much higher chance to hit than an assault would normally have. Alright Klaus, you've got an abysmal 58 aim, what are we doing here? You are a specialist. 45 hack, that's not great, but whatever. So, a bright side, he does have good movement. Specialists with good movement are nice. He does have 6 and 8 defense. But with that aim, you're going to be shooting things too often, buddy. 5, 16, even worse aim. And a, <laughs> you're a gunner. A gunner with 59 aim. Oh man, that's uh, you have cutthroat. Hmm. I might I might have to think about taking that because, I mean, we're not gonna we're just gonna have to make you kind of a tank character. I think. I mean, with that with that terrible. There's not a lot in the tree that increases aim on gunners. Here we did kind of luck out and get lone wolf. So if we had the gunner in an isolated position, but. That's not going to be... You're just not going to be a great character. I'm sorry. 
Boris, what we got? Oh, you're a shinobi. Excellent. So he has very low aim, average mobility, but that defense and dodge is real good on a shinobi. Fortify. Okay. Yeah, he'll he'll just we're gonna make him a standard blade master shinobi. And Ryuji is a technical. Okay. No defense, but 11 dodge. Good stuff. Huh. Since Ryuji does come from a game where he is a member of an organization known as the Phantom Thieves, I feel like this would actually, you know, this would actually be a great skill for a technical to take because technicals are excellent openers with their flamethrower. So having a technical that would stay hidden after the squad reveals, um, provided that they didn't open themselves, open the, the engagement themselves, that could be extremely useful. So I might take that if we if we can keep him alive to tech sergeant. Is that everybody? Are we good? Looks like we're good. All right. So we got our engineer. We've got oh that's great. That's so that's a result of um, these do not pop up on the map randomly anymore like they did in the basically in, in vanilla XCOM 2 and in War of the Chosen. You got these rewards on the Geoscape whenever you completed a mission. And now there that doesn't happen. They only show up when you have an Intel package reward, but it's still, as far as I can tell, as random as to what it is. So the reason getting those alloys is great is that means we will be able to start researching laser weapons uh, earlier than we otherwise would. Now, I don't think I've said anything about this, these values down here before. So now is probably as good a time as any because I'm not, you know, even people who've played Long War, if you played an early, Long War 2, if you played an early version of it, you may not have ever seen this explicitly represented. These uh, little values here, strength, vigilance, force, strength one, vigilance three, force one in this region. Force is universal across all regions. It's basically a measure of the quality of Advent's troops. We're still at the very beginning of the game, so force is only one. Vigilance is three because we've done two missions in this region and vigilance was prior, it was one. So every time you complete a mission, vigilance goes up there is a special type of mission that we might see later on that increases vigilance by a lot, uh, but most missions increase vigilance by one. Strength is how many legions of troops Advent has in this region. So just one strength is the lowest it can be. This region has strength two, which means uh, the, the units that you'd face on missions be a little bit tougher and potentially a little more numerous. I think that you don't start to see a difference in, in I think that the difference in quantity comes in every two increments. So um, at strength three, these like missions that only have seven to nine enemies would bump up to 10 to 12 enemies. But you can see um, quality differences in the, in the units that are being deployed at, at every interval. So right now, we wanna keep doing missions in this region if we can, because strength is still at one. So we've got our first liberation mission. Now, as I understand it, in the previous incarnations of Long War II, this, start liberating the region, was not explicitly spelled out. And you have to liberate a region. That's one of the first things that you're supposed to do to advance the story. You, you have to do this to an extent to get the location of the Black Site facility and eventually to unlock the Doom counter for the Avatar project. And if the, you know, the Avatar pro if you don't know what the Doom Counter is at, you can literally get a game over in this, um, in this campaign without ever knowing that the aliens were even working on the project in the first place. Some people apparently had that experience, so... And, gloriously, it's an Intel reward, and we are very low on Intel. So this is, for many reasons, this is a mission we want to do. We've got a lot of people now. So we're going to take Jana and Technical. We're going to need to hack, so we need a specialist. So it's a question of who do we take as our specialist. I am going to want an assault. I don't think, I think we left uh, Toph out of the, 
out of things the last, last go round. So notice our timer here. We've got, let's see, six hours or six days is the standard amount of time it takes to infiltrate a five person squad. I notice we only have one sharpshooter. Well, we're gonna leave them off this mission. Uh, Alec has revival. One reason why I'm probably going to put most of my double promoted people on this is that the liberation missions tend to be harder than the regular, the other missions. They're, 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 the quality of the enemies you face is usually just a little bit higher. So, we've got Sapper Grenadier, we've got Technical, that's, that's a lot of firepower. Probably overkill, but Salt, and now we need... Who would be good for this? We need someone, because we've got some explosives oriented people here. Really three, because Joanna has a claymore. So we want somebody who can take shots on the enemies after we've taken them down. So I think Jill is up on that. I think Jill's the right fit. Now, we're just a little bit above where we want to be here. So I'm going to equip the SMG is easier to smuggle in than a rifle, which makes sense. Um, we got a technical uses. Yeah, I want. Well, hmm. What's your movement, Natalia? Fifteen. Maybe we do want the. Do we want the specialist to use an SMG? I mean, we'll probably be fine because we always have. We have Toph. The shotgun. If we get in trouble. Now here's the question: Do we have any suppressors? We have one suppressor. So here's what we're gonna do. You can increase people's, uh, excuse me, decrease infiltration time also by getting rid of some of these objects and by using suppressors. We only have... Oh, we got three. We have a third person in that kit. Yeah, and Jill's mostly just going to be shooting. But I do want... I do want people to have flashbacks. So... We're at 7-Eleven right now, but notice that it's not green. So it's like... This is like 7 days, 11 hours, and, you know, 20 minutes or something. We're going just over. We won't... It's unclear, in my view, whether we'll actually make it to 100% with that. I usually like to have two hours of leeway for a reason I'll explain in a moment. What are we getting rid of here? I really think you are probably getting rid of this flashbang. That would still leave us with three flashbangs. Plus the Claymore does disorientation. I don't know though, I like flashbangs. They're very effective in a lot of situations as a bailout item. Let's get rid of the grenade on our assault. We've got other people who do explosive damage. Alright, so now we're at 710, and we can do even better than that. We can put a suppressor on our shotgun. A laser set on that too. And I think that's all I'm doing with the mods at the moment. What were the other two? Expanded magazine is stock. We'll uh, probably put both of those on my on one of my gunners. Okay. So this team is ready to roll. Let's get it done. Now, very little time. In this instance, there was very little time on the Geoscape moving from the Sky Ranger to the mission site. But that's not always the case. Sometimes it's like up to an hour, hour and a half. Like imagine if the site had been over here. Then there would be a little moment where we'd be traveling where the timer would be going. And sometimes I've had missions that it tells me you're going to infiltrate to 100%, and I've been stuck at 99% and not made it. 
I've not been happy in those situations. We have... So that's another liberation mission, but that's a much sketchier timer. Five days, 13 hours. That's not enough to get six people, or excuse me, to get five people on it unless we boost the infiltration. We do have enough intel to do that, and it does give an intel reward. So we, we if we do that mission and we succeed, oh, that's tricky. We need to make a decision on it now, though, because the longer we wait, the more the, the less time we have. If we if we do boost infiltration, I think we can get six people on this, which would be kind of nice. Let's just take a look at the breakdown here. So, who would we send? Obviously you two. Also, Bannon City, Advent Vault. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So... definitely want a technical for a mission like this. We need, what do we have? We have a ranger, we have a team, or no. Sharpshooter, shinobi, technical, we need a specialist because it's a hack mission. I'd like to have an assault, I think. Ranger with 67 aim. I mean, we need to use one of our gunners, but our gunners are just not good. I mean, gunner with 60 aim, gunner with 59 aim. So we'll take you. So notice here, we can infiltrate. We can we can use the 50% boost to infiltrate up to 37%, even on the sketch timer. Do we want an additional rookie? I want to leave enough people that we could send out another squad. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait a minute. Is this the guy that we, uh, hold on a second. This is totally the guy that we bought from the black market. And he also has horrible aim. He also just looks absolutely hideous. What is going on here, buddy? I can't believe I paid 40 supplies for you. You were not worth that Illyrium core. <laughs> Alright, normally I'm not going to do this probably for every rando we equip, but my goodness, this just... You know, you can keep your ridiculous hairstyle. Let's just give you a helmet and cover it up so I never have to see your face again. Yeah, it looks fine. And, for God's sake, we gotta get you a new set of apparel. This is... Everything going on with you is, uh, is unacceptable. That's not great, but whatever. It's better than whatever we were looking at before. Now he actually looks like a soldier. I can't believe that the guy we bought from the black market is also a gunner with like 59 aim. Like, you're a gunner, man. You can't, you gotta have better aim than that. So, hmm. This team is much weaker than the other team we had. Abandoned City tends to be, can be very easy though, depending on how the level is set up. It also says the objective timer is 11 turns. The only thing that worries me about this is this region is a strength 2 region, so we would probably see better enemies. What I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to, 
I'm gonna send these guys on this mission. But I'm also going to keep an eye on it, and potentially we're gonna. If if the mission looks like it isn't gonna go well for us, or like or something better comes up, I'll probably bail on this and I'll abort. You can abort the um, infiltration at any time. So, and we don't have to boost the infiltration until the end of the until it's time to launch and the boost is retroactive. So, if we want to do the mission, we can, but we don't have to. Give you All right. In position to drop. Threat and infiltration. Let's go ahead and grab Avengers spawning new course. Gorilla Tactics School now operational. All right, that's good news for us. train up and as what? The obvious one to train up here is Burns as a Shinobi because of his insane 18 movement, which I've never seen before. I've seen a lot of 17s. I've never seen an 18. The other obvious choice is probably to make John Wick a sniper because of his 13 movement. He's not going to be able to... We're just going to want him perched on a rooftop shooting things. Utaba has a similar similar build, similar problem. But she'd be a good specialist with 10. Oh, and Najima with 11. Hmm. Let's get another specialist because specialists are really important. Those hack rewards that you can get from missions can be quite useful. Alright. Now there is something that occurred to me here. If you've got something new for us, Commander, Here's the thing. We've got a perk here called Scavengers, which says resource rewards from scanned, uh, scanned rumors are double. How far are we from? We're only seven days from the supply drop. So what I'm inclined to do is wait to pick this up for a week, put Scavengers on, and we'll get double the reward that we would have gotten. So I'm going to boost it a little so it's easy to... Okay. Interesting. Four days, seven hours. Smash and grab. Seize the advent resource catch. Material. Oh, I want that. I want that badly. Hmm. So this is yeah, this is another sketchy timer. We have four days and seven hours to do this. We would almost assuredly have to boost our infiltration to have a shot on this mission. Because um Four days and seven hours, we would probably have to boost just to get five on it. Let's take a look who we have. We do have five people that are available. We've got Gunner, Grenadier, Ranger, Assault. It's not a bad team. And this is a mission where we wouldn't need a specialist, so the lack of a specialist isn't a problem. We can get to 104% if we boost. Uh, yeah, this is, this is interesting. But we have a revealed start, so that's not great. And we have a shinobi that's not going to be able to fight well. But we need these resources. We have so little of them. Do we have any of these? No, we don't have any yet. Okay. Don't have any mods that can put in our soldiers. Um, so we've got Jensen, who is a terrible gunner, but he's got 7 HP, which is pretty nice. Sully is an assault. Assaults are always useful. 
three med kits among our crew. This isn't a terrible crew, it's not great. What is your movement? 14. See, there's a temptation with me because you have the sawed off shotgun. There's a temptation, since it's a city center mission and we'll probably be sneaking into like a warehouse or something, there's a temptation for me to give you the SMG and, and have you basically just run up to enemies and point blank with the sawed off. This thing only has two shells in it. But these enemies early on are so weak that that's basically the ability to erase two enemies from existence. And that's pretty powerful. Hmm. I'd say the same thing about Ari though. Would it be better to give her the SMG so she can move around faster? These missions have a very, uh, a reinforcement timer that's kind of demanding. 14, 14, minus 3 is going down to 11. You've got 15. It's acceptable. You have 11 as well. And you have 11. So everybody is going to be slow. Let's make a judgment call on this after after we see, because so we can infiltrate, get these five over 100%. But let's see, let's see what happens elsewhere on the on the geoscape first, because I that would lock me into committing 50 intel across these missions. Actually, I'm not sure we can do both, can we? Depends on the timing. When is this mission good? Four days, four uh, four days, five hours. This is four days, ten hours. <laughs> oh, I can see how this is. I can see how this is shaping up. So it's going to be like, we do this mission first, commit the intel, and then we do this mission immediately, and then we commit the intel reward from this mission to make this mission doable. It's going to be an interesting little daisy chain if this is in fact what we do. Right, before anything happens, let's go to the black market and sell our Illyrium cores because they're going for a lot of money. Market is open. 38. Her. Uh, I can't sell you anything else. Now, oh, I don't even have enough. Even with all that, I don't have enough money to get a scientist. Thought I might. Okay, so what do we do now? We can scan for intel. I don't really want to get any additional missions. Kind of got it, but but we might get a mission that's really good. So if we get a mission that's really good, we'll deal with it. But I'm gonna go back here for a minute, for a few days, just scan, try to get some intel. We're so low on intel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you found the implanted ship. You know, stuff's looking good. Whatever. Experimental weapons inspire. That doesn't mean a lot to me. But since I'm going to wait to pick up those alloys, we can't alloys. We can't do this yet. That's the next big thing. Let's just go ahead and uh, we'll want experimental weapons eventually, so you can make a little headway on that while I bide my time. Ooh, that's a scientist. That is a scientist with exactly a six-day timer. <sighs> what is more important to get at this point? <sighs> decisions, decisions. I'm going to call it here and we'll mull over our situation next time.